Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I am going to be doing is checking out my former daily driver. In a virtual machine here, I have Endeavor OS loaded up. Let's go ahead and full screen it. There we go. This is a Arch-based distribution. And like I said, about probably a year and a half ago or so, I used it probably for almost a year straight. It is by far my personal favorite Arch-based Linux distribution out there. And the reason we're checking it out today is there are a good amount of updates and some significant changes worth mention. And one of them you're probably noticing right out of the gate, this is a live image at the moment, so we can go ahead and install it. But this right here is not the XFCE kind of purplish theme that we're used to. This is the new default KDE Plasma. So we're gonna check out that and oh, a whole lot more right after we thank the sponsor of today's video. That is going to be Exter and their smart wallets. The one I've been using has been the standard Senate card holder. Beautiful wallet has been absolutely perfect. And of course they do have more traditional style wallets such as their parliament wallet, which gives you the traditional kind of fold out, but still with the slide out card mechanism thing we got here. The one I've been holding right here is the aluminum card holder. You can see here they have an absolutely huge variety of colors that you could go ahead and pick from. All of the wallets feature this little band around so you can put cash or whatever you need to. There's an additional card cover here which you can use to slide out various cards. And they really do have a whole bunch of other products. They have their very own kind of Apple Tag solar powered alternative which is nice. Which these things are really good to put in that kind of a band thing we have here. And with their Black Friday sale you can save even more. You can see some of the discounts right here. This Black Friday bundle is freaking awesome. Awesome. And if you use my coupon code and link down below, you have the potential to save even more. So with that here, we are back on Endeavor OS. Now, before I get too into the actual desktop and all that, we are going to start the installer because supposedly there has been some improvements to this and I could already see some, at least when it comes to general visuals. Now, I'm gonna start with online. We're gonna click on that. One thing they did change is you can't select multiple desktop environments during the installation process, and that's to prevent some issues that they were having. So if I were to go through this installation process theoretically, here we have the desktop, and these are all your options. So you have no desktop, Plasma, Gnome, XFCE, you have all the big wigs right here. You are missing some of the more niche ones like Sway and Pantheon, but this right here is a good selection. Now, if I'm to select one, go next. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I absolutely love it when uh, distributions give you this kind of package option here. So you could go enable or disable various firewall packages. We have the base, so you could go through here. It's probably not recommended to disable any of those. You could deselect their applications, which I would not recommend you do if you're gonna install this. This is the primary purpose. <clears throat> Ignore my voice, I'm a little sick. If you're gonna disable this, you should probably just install arch we have your recommended package here so a lot of uh w get the general git things that you're going to want firefox you could disable that if you want to end up pulling something else and then of course you have your lts printing support and so forth now what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to cancel out of this and we are going to go with the offline installation without necessarily needing an internet connection and you can see here we don't have the option to select the packages or that the desktop environment because it's going to give us the default we can select no bootloader if you want to that's the beauty of linux let's go next we want a bootloader let's erase the disk uh let's go ahead and swap to a file shall we and we can encrypt the system here this is just your standard kind of calamaris installer magically fill all that out real quick continue install install now and we're good to go. So thank you for your support. They're gonna have their little slideshow here. Of course, if we click on this, we can see everything that it's actually doing in the background, which again is uh, really nice for somebody who's a nerd like me. And boom, just like that, our installation is complete. Let's go ahead and restart and get into our system. And boom, let's go ahead and sign on in. And there we go. So we get prompted with the typical welcome thing here that allows you to kind of run through some of the things you may want to do on your system. Saves you from having to watch some uh, YouTuber talk about the things to do after an install. And this was technically an offline install, so it's gonna be a good idea to click update system here, type in our password. The default kind of AUR helper within Endeavor OS is yay, which is my preferred. And I'm not gonna be excluding any packages, so let's just let it do what it needs to do. 500 megabytes, that ain't too bad. Granted, I think the this came out a couple days ago, so it's not that old, but then again, Arch rolling release. What can you do? And I mentioned earlier that this was my daily driver for a while. If you're kind of curious, I switched to a Nobrara Linux, which is a phenomenal distribution if you're looking for a Fedora base, kind of gaming focused, has a bunch of tweaks and whatnot to uh, make that a better experience. 
and on another machine I have been using Debian. So currently on my main desktop is unfortunately Windows for another couple weeks. I'm almost done with school. Gaming laptop is Norbrara, and then my kind of really cheap laptop is Debian, which honestly I find myself using that cheap laptop more than anything. Now I know generally wallpapers aren't worth talking about, but Endeavor OS has a lot of really good ones. Download more Endeavor wallpapers, community wallpapers. Like I said, there's a lot of good ones in here, and you can see how much of them there are. And there we go, we got some folders in there now, so uh, let's go OK, and close this out. Choose a wallpaper. Community. Let's actually copy this location. The thing we're going to go and do next is dive into the KDE settings. Because like I said, this is the first time, oh, there's KRunner. This is the very first time that KDE is the kind of stock default. So let's go under appearance here, desktop and wallpaper. If I go add image and then I paste in this, this is just a little pro tip if you're running a KDE plasma here. Let's go control A, open, and now we have all of the Endeavor OS wallpapers. This is the one I used to use all the time. This is my favorite. <laughs> so the global theme, Breeze Dark Endeavor OS. So they did go ahead and kind of customize their own. By at least my analysis here, it's just a typical Breeze with a uh, <laughs> the uh, purple option selected, which is fair enough. You don't want to stray too far away from default unless if you're getting into something like a Garuda Linux territory, and then that's kind of the point. But yeah, generally pretty standard. Let's go back and check out the About This system here. We are running KDE Plasma 5.27, version 6 is going to be coming out very soon. I'm super excited for that. Kernel version is 6.6. .6. X11 seems to be the default at the moment. And then you see a bunch of stuff about my system. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to close this out and let's launch Firefox. I do need to give them some credit because they definitely made their website a little more usable and understandable since last time I was on here. You scroll down and you have some... <coughs> You scroll down here and you have some immediate options to go ahead and download this, which is definitely appreciated, and then you go into some more of the information. And I will note that when I first booted this up, I actually noticed that there's an option to go ahead and select NVIDIA, similar to what you would get in like a Pop! OS, for example. Pop! OS is known for having that NVIDIA option, and the fact that that is also in here is really nice. Let's scroll up and go to News here. This is their latest release, came out yesterday as of recording, and here we can get a lot of information about what has changed. Again, the primary thing is KDE Plasma has replaced XFCE. And this, I kind of pointed this out. I haven't, I read through some of this, but Sway, Qtile, and some of the other ones aren't available through the community installer anymore. And that's because the devs aren't working on it, so if you're interested in contributing it in that way, uh, let them know. And then we have some kind of more in the background type stuff. Stronger encryption, host name resolution, restructure of that package selection screen. So a lot of really simple fixes that make, well not simple, but a lot of fixes that make the overall experience and installation more stable and more reliable. And then we have app improvements here. Just some really minor things. They added a changed language option to the welcome screen here. Some of the packages have support for new options. And yeah, overall, it is a rather strong release. If you are interested in Arch, this is definitely one way to go here. Let's open up the terminal and see the kind of default system usage. So incredibly low system usage just sitting here on idle. You can see the CPUs hovering about 1% or 2%, even with a system monitor running, and all these uh, various background tasks that you can see running here, a lot of K stuff. And that's one thing too, KDE Plasma has gotten so lightweight that using a kind of lightweight specific distribution really is not, generally not really a factor of consideration unless if the hardware is so garbage you have to go with something that, I mean, if whatever hardware you're trying to install something on, if it can't handle KDE Plasma, you might as well put like a really lightweight window manager on it. But with that said, we're using just under two gigs of RAM, which is fairly standard even compared to other desktop environments like a GNOME. And yeah, overall CPU usage and all that on idle is really nice. If we open up something like Firefox, that should kind of crank it up a little bit. This is again, this is running on a virtual machine, so do note that. But yeah, system resource usage here and RAM usage, even when playing a YouTube video, is still pretty low considering. And overall, especially if you're somebody who's new to Arch Linux, some of the built-in tools really does help out. If I search EOS, we can see some of the tools here. If I open up a welcome, this is where we're gonna get access to a lot of them. We were just in here, but I didn't really go into a lot of the stuff. This is all your after install, but if you go to assistant here, we have some more things, such as updating your mirrors so you have faster download speeds. We have some tips here, which will take you to specific tutorials. 
and add more apps. And you could use this to browse various AUR applications. And if I'm to click on this, for example, we have a quick start installer, which is really cool. It's not graphically the prettiest thing, but through here you could get a lot of really popular applications and tools. So here I could grab Chromium if I want to. You could see the check. If I go to communication, we have some options, no discord though. If I go to email, let's say I wanted Thunderbird. Image processing, we're gonna grab GIMP. Office, let's go ahead and grab LibreOffice Fresh. And then sure, let's grab a torrent client. Why not? Let's grab KTorrent. It's really integrated just very nicely. And video players, what do we got to select from here? Oh, there's no MP4, is it built in? Or MPV? Oh, it's built in, good. VLC is really nice, but MPV is definitely my favorite video player on Linux. Gives me the least amount of issues. It doesn't have a lot of unnecessary features I don't use, it's just overall a great application. If I click install now through here, we type in the password, and you can see all the packages, we continue, and easy as that. So ultimately, if you're somebody who's new to Linux and you want to try out an Arch system, but you're not sure if you want to necessarily go and install everything manually through a terminal, you're not sure what packages you need, so on and so forth, this is an absolutely fantastic option for you. And I personally like this better than something than Manjaro because they use their own repositories and they make their own additional tweaks and whatnot beyond sometimes what you expect from an Arch system. So with that, I do hope you have a beautiful day. Again, check out these wallets, they're super cool. Like I said, I've been using mine for over a year. And with all that, have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.